So one of the first past lives that I had, the first past life regressions that I had, was pretty, pretty fantastic, and I was inclined not to believe it. But in the end, I did, mostly because it was useful, and I'm a bit of a, a, bit of a pragmatist. I like things to be useful, and this was very useful in my life to have this past life regression. So I had this past life regression where I was regressed back to this time period that was, I think, maybe the 12th or 13th century, somewhere in Europe, and I was some kind of a, um, a jouster. And so I thought at first, oh, this is crazy, this is out of a storybook. But what convinced me that it wasn't out of a storybook was how the story ended. You know, stories and storybooks are fantastic, and they're heroic, and they're dramatic, and they have happy endings. Or at least they have dramatic, meaningful endings. This one did not. So here I was. I was this young man, incredibly fit, healthy man. And I'll never forget what that felt like, because that's not my physique in this life. And to have this very strong, incredibly strong body was... Um, quite a memorable experience. So I was this incredibly fit young man, and I lived in a very small stone hut way out in the middle of nowhere. There were no neighbors. It was all myself, and it was just myself and my horse, and I was very close to my horse. And uh, we had this solitary existence, not a very exciting life, nothing really to talk about. Um, you know, I didn't have children, I didn't have family, no love and no love life, um, but I just led this this quiet life out, you know, in the woods with my horse, and my horse was my best friend. But apparently, I had this role where I would be occasionally called to come compete in these in these jousting competitions, and I had been told that I was the best, that I was the best at this particular sport, and as a result. Whenever people from the castle uh, were having a competition, they would call me to come compete. I guess, you know, I was entertaining. And I was very proud of the fact that I was so good at this particular sport. And I was also very loyal. And I had a very strong sense of loyalty. And I felt that um, I had a duty to always go when called. And so one day I'm out in the woods with my horse, living my little quiet life, and someone comes rushing up, you know, and we they're a messenger from the castle, and they're, they're coming to fetch me because I'm needed, and I assume it's for a joust because that's what I do, I'm a joust, I get my, you know, big jousting coat out and I go, and so I get on my horse in a big, big rush, and we get all dressed up. You know, my horse has a costume, and I have a costume. We're all dressed for the battle, which is not a battle. It's a competition. It's a sport. And we go rushing off to the, to the um, what do you call that? It's like a, you know, a fortress around this castle where they usually have the sports tournaments. And we're rushing off, and when I get there, usually when I would get there, they would have the gates open, and I would just ride in into the competition and there'd be a lot of people there and you know I'd go and, and do my thing but when I got there this time it was weird because the gates were all shut and closed up the ramparts were up or whatever the terminology is for those places back there <laughs> the, you know the bra drawbridge was up I don't know and uh, it was closed down closed for service and I go rushing up on my horse and we're you know and when I get close to the wall, the enclosure, all of a sudden all of these men jump over the wall and they're shooting arrows at me. And all of a sudden I'm in the middle of a battle. And it was so unexpected because I didn't know I was going to a battle. I thought I was going to a sports competition. And I was taken off guard. I also didn't have the weapons for a battle. I just had a pole, you know. Um, but one of these archers, um, jumped over the fence and I guess, uh, shot an arrow at my horse or did something to scare my horse. And so my horse goes rearing up as horses do when they're scared sometimes and so high up on his hind legs that he throws me and I go flying in the air and tumbling 
and I tumble through the air in front of the horse and I actually land in front of the horse so that when the horse is coming down, boom, he lands on me. And his leg goes right boom, into my chest and I'm killed instantly. Just the impact of this, you know, hundreds of pounds of horse kills me. And it's the most shocking way to die because this is my best friend who's now killed me. This is my horse, my, my comrade. And I couldn't, I couldn't process it. And so as she's taking me through this past life, first, you know, I see myself fly through the air and then I see my horse come down on me and I'm like, and then I'm like, oh, but I got back up and I'm getting on the horse and trying to get the horse to leave, but the horse won't leave. And the regressionist is like, well, where are you again? And I said, well, I'm underneath the horse, but I'm also on the horse, <laughs> you know, which you can't be both places, right? And what it was, was I, I could not accept that I was dead. And so my spirit had left my body and was trying to talk my horse into leaving my body behind because the body on the ground, dead, was something I didn't want to deal with. So I'm like, come on, Chauncey, come on, let's go. And Chauncey's like, I'm not living, leaving him. I'm not leaving my master on the ground like this. And the horse is like, what? <laughs> and, and so I'm stuck in this limbo where I keep repeating my death. I keep seeing my death play over and over like a movie playing over and over. And this is where a good hypnotherapist comes in. And first of all, they got to get you out of that loop. You know, because you can't relive trauma over and over again. That's 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 how you have that's how PTSD gets formed in our bodies, right? We live trauma over and over again, and we get stuck in the trauma. And so I was living this trauma over and over again of my death. And so the past life therapist says, "Well, why are you being shown this?" You know, first of all, she gets me to get some clarity. She's like, "You know, you know, you're dead, right? <laughs> like, you're not alive. You can't leave." Because you're not, I mean, you're dead. Just, you just need to recognize that before you leave as a spirit. Recognize that you're dead. You're not leaving as a living being. You're leaving. <laughs> and, and I was just like, no, but how could my horse kill me? My horse is my best friend. My horse would never kill me. Why would my horse kill me? And it was such an absurd death, right? It was not a heroic death. You know, I didn't win any battle. I didn't die from bravery. I didn't you know, die as a result of my, you know, swift action or my careless disregard for my well-being. I mean, I died this ridiculous, absurd death that was meaningless, you know. I wasn't fighting for anybody. I didn't help anybody. I didn't even win a competition. I basically stumbled into a situation I had no business being in and died an accidental, absurd death. And that's what kind of, that was a clue that let me know this probably was not my imagination. And that's the thing about past lives. If it's just you making up stories in your head, you know, you're going to make up a better story. And I thought to myself, I would not give myself a death like that. I would give myself a heroic death. I would be this amazing person who came charging in and killed a bunch of enemy and died in my last glorious effort to protect somebody. You know, that would be the ending I would have written to that story. But no, I have this absurd ending to the story. My own horse kills me. I accomplish nothing. I rush into battle unprepared. I'm completely useless. And my, and my life is over for no apparent reason, right? Absurd death. Now, why? Why was I shown this, right? A good hypnotherapist is going to ask you, what's the purpose of this, of being shown this death? What does this death have to do with your current life? And when you figure that out, then you actually walk away from the past life knowing something you didn't know before.